This video will be the unboxing of my new NX5300 Kenwood NXDN portable radio. Band split 380 to 470 megahertz, capable of 128 zones and 1,000 channels. It can be upgraded to 4,000, but that, that's an extra flash. I don't recall what that costs. Uh, I will be upgrading this to DMR, to the uh, enabling the SD card for recording. Uh, the ARC4 encryption to be compatible with other Motorola um, DMR radios that are in my group and Bluetooth programming will also be enabled. Uh, all those are extra features that you have to pay for a flash. Uh, this comes with the KNB-L2 uh, medium capacity battery but eventually I want to upgrade to the KNB-L3 uh, which is a, a 3400 milliamp battery, high capacity. Um, and eventually I plan on getting the KMC-54WD speaker mic, um, although I, I'm i starting to do research to see what other, sp like a Bluetooth spe speaker mics can be compatible with it. Uh, it would be very interesting if I could get a Motorola Apex speaker mic to pair with it. Don't know if that's possible, but I, I'm going to be looking into that. Um, the software for this radio is the KPG-D1-D1N. Um, I've also purchased that and uh, requested the wideband option because I will be using this radio for ham, and there's still a lot of analog ham repeaters that are wideband. on the box. And the directions. Things like how to install the antenna. Gotta know how to do that. Little legend for all the different uh, icons of the radio so we won't go through the whole thing Pretty good, good feel on the radio. Uh, I think Mo uh, Kenwood has really stepped up their game in the last 10 years. Um, I think their products are approaching the quality of Motorola. Um, they they may be uh, they may be on the same level as uh, you know the uh, XPR 7550 series. Um, this radio does have a good feel to it. Put the, uh, the antenna on it. Comes with the side programming cover. A basic belt clip, plastic, but feels pretty rugged. So now we have the KNB L2, which is like the medium capacity lithium ion. Um, I think it's 2600 milliamp hours.
lot of paperwork in there. This battery's got it's got a little bit of a little bit of size to it. it says 7.4 volts, 2600 milliamp hours. There we go. Got four battery contacts there. Positive and negative on the outside, and a D S on the inner two. And that's the deal here. Oh. It goes in this way, kind of like an XTS 3000 or 5000. You got to hook it in and then lock it down. All right, so I'm going to take the plastic off of it, turn it on. Unprogrammed. The buttons have a quality feel to them. Let's see if we can get any kind of menu option here. Now there's really... The emergency button has a good click to it. The blue button on the side and the two lower buttons, they got a good click, but the click on the front buttons is very faint. You can't even really hear it, and you can't really feel a click like you can the side. I mean, you can hear that. but you can't really hear these. So, I do like the the A and B lever. I'll probably be using that for my encryption. Now, we don't run encryption on ham. It's not allowed, but you can run encryption on commercial. I've, I've been a fan of tinkering around with uh, encryption for many many years. I think of it as another mode like in ham radio you have your different modes like your AM, your FM, your sideband, your DMR, NXDN. Well to me encryption is just another mode to, just to tinker around with and uh, yeah, I'll be experimenting with that in the commercial band. So well I can't seem to go into any kind of a menu. It says on program. So that's gonna be about it for the radio. Uh, the unboxing of the radio. So I'll go ahead and set that over here. Now we're going to open up the rapid charger KSC32. They make a fancier one. Uh, it's got a different letter on here. KSC's like maybe 32Y or Y32, something like that. Um, it's capable of plugging into a a computer or a network for monitoring the battery's uh, health. I may look into that down the road. So we have uh, directions. Ah, charge time. So my KNBL2 says charge time is 180 minutes. Wow, if I get the L3, I'm looking at 240 minutes. That's okay. I usually charge my batteries up at night once I go to bed, so however long it takes. <clears throat> All right. Pretty good sized cup. Kind of <clears throat> kind of reminds me a little bit of the old uh um MT-2000, MTS-2000, um, 
HT1000, JT1000 cup charger of the, uh, the Motorola series, kind of. There's some specs, in case you want to hook it up as a mobile charger. There you go. Now it says DC 16 volts in, 1.6 amps, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me if this would run on 12 volts, or 13.8 from your car. Uh, that's how I used to run the Motorola charger that I had for my MT2000 back 20 plus years ago. Gosh, that's 1992. That was uh, 27 years ago. Man, I'm getting old. Alright, so we also have the power supply. Pretty, pretty big supply by today's standards, in my opinion. So this one is capable of being used here in America or over in Europe. Handles 100 to 240 volts, 50 or 60 hertz, half amp. Output DC, 16 volts, 1.6 amp. And it uses the typical looking Kenwood large barrel plug. Alright, so now we're going to put on the belt clip and see how easy or hard this is with uh, this process. Alright, so the screws have a little bit of, uh, looks like blue Loctite. Now, eventually I do plan on getting a leather carry case. I prefer leather carry cases over these little belt clips. Alright, so screws going in. Okay. And then drop that screw in. Pretty easy. Yeah, it's plastic, but uh, I mean, it feels pretty quality. There's a there's a good good amount of hold to it. So, I mean, the radio's got a good feel in my hand. It's, it's good size. It's kind of kind of reminds me of the size of my uh, XPR 7550, which I sold to uh, to buy this. So, all right. Next section of the video is going to be dropping it in the charger. I already got the power supply plugged in. Now I'm going to take the large barrel plug connector, plug it in, and that charger's got five contacts on it. We got two pluses, an S, a T, and a negative. T is probably for temperature. Not sure what S is. S could be serial, could be the way that this thing's programmed. I, I still need to look into that. I haven't done any programming with them yet. Um, could be signal, you know, something. I, I'm not sure. I really don't know what S stands for at, the, at, at this time. It could be part of the temp. Could be the other, you know, because oftentimes they'll put a thermistor in the battery, and the thermistor is a variable resistor based on temperature, so it needs two leads. So these two leads could have to do with a, a thermistor, but then again, this is a lithium ion, so it might even have a computer in it, a little computer chip monitoring things. So 
So there you go. Sitting in the charger. Oh, just to show you what the, uh, the box looks like, you get if you want the 380 to 470, you got to get the K6 model because uh, there's a lot of models out there that are the 450 to 512 or 500, whatever it is. So if you're wanting this for ham, which is probably who most people are going to be watching this video are hams, you got to get the K6 model. So there you go. Thank you for watching my unboxing of the NX5300.